always happy on a Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever night it is to be here in my, in my safe and uh, comfortable studio. And I always have a wonderful guest on the other end that I'm rubbing shoulders with. So my name is Dr. Tova Goldfein. I, I tend to forget that because I get all excited. I get triggered. Uh, this is TMS Roundtable Recovery, and we've been streaming weekly going on about five years, and there's no stopping because there is just so much important information to share and to inspire and educate people about self-healing. And I am privileged once again to meet someone who has self-healed from chronic pain and even wrote a book. Now, her name is Pritha Bhatt. Pritha Bhatt. Pritha Bhatt. This is a magnificent name, this magnificent creature sitting on the other end of this studio. And I, you know, I'm like a little bit of a, of a, um, a nuisance because I'm always looking for, you know, stories and people that have healed and that happen to be all over and you're going to heal too. And people say to me, oh, I want to be on your round table when I recover, I said, no, you come to my round table now, because now is the journey. So I'm thrilled that we met. I think you, I found you and you said, well, I'm waiting to hear from Eddie Lindenstein, because he's going to interview you also, because you really were out there with your story and your book. And when I spoke to you personally and heard the series of events, I was just so excited to have a broadcast. So we're going to talk in a minute. Um, I like the audience uh, to to hear kind of like a um, a timeline, you know, like you were X years and you played sports and fell, or something happened at this age, and then then we have an idea of how one step led to the other, and then what happened as an adult and your healing. If you could sort of start from there. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, Dr. Tova, for that nice introduction. Uh -huh. uh, so for people who don't know me, my name is Preeta Bhatt, and uh, I live in the U.S. in a small Midwest town. Um, and I work full time. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. Uh, I have a very active 10-year-old. So my life is really, really busy right now. Uh, but my story started, uh, I'm going to say, about 13 years ago, and uh, out of the blue, I, I was struck with low back pain. Uh, I did not have an accident. There was no fall, no physical trauma. It literally hit me out of the blue. Uh, and at that moment, I felt it. It caught my attention, uh, but I ignored it because there were other things going on in my life that needed critical attention from me. So I ignored it for a while. I just took painkillers and uh, I tried to massage on my own. Uh, it didn't go away. Uh, then a few weeks went by, it didn't go away. And then it really started getting my attention. And then I went down the medical route. Uh, I went to chiropractors. Uh, I did those spinal injections. Uh, I did uh, all kinds of physical therapy, but you know, uh, nothing worked. And this pain lasted for four years. And when the pain happened, that was when my child came into our lives. So my, my child is adopted, and we had her since she was newborn. So for the first four years of her life, yeah, I was in chronic pain. So I could not hold her. I could not run and play with her. I couldn't sit on the floor and play with her. So it was depressing. Uh, I was very sad that I couldn't do things with my child. So she, for the first four years of her life, she always saw me lying down. Wow. And she didn't know anything different. Right. Uh, so I got to a point where I thought, this is not sustainable. I cannot live like this. So I happened to do a Google search for uh, healing your back using your mind. And the first thing that popped up was healing back pain by Dr. Sarma. And I thought, this is a sign from the universe. So I bought the book. Uh, but when I got the book, uh, 
I was not impressed with the cover. I was not impressed with the introduction. I looked at it and I tossed it. I thought, <laughs> no, my back pain is real. So did I Alan Gordon. He threw it across the room. His mother said to him and he said, he threw it across the room and said, well, how's the book going to heal me? <laughs> Exactly. So I, I did not even look at it for a few months. Wow. And then, then uh, you know, I joined various support groups. Uh, I didn't know about TMS even after that book. I joined a support group and someone suggested Healing Back Pain by Dr. Sarno. And that rang a bell. I thought, hmm, I've, heard, I've heard about this and I've seen this somewhere. And then I realized I had bought it a few months ago. I started reading it and I saw myself on every wow. page and I thought, this is it. This is me. Wow. And I was not even halfway through the book and my symptoms, uh, I, I saw improvement by like 60%. Wow. 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 Then I finished the book and I think I read it twice. Uh, I was so impressed. Something shifted in my brain. Uh, I committed to the TMS philosophy. Uh, and TMS is a phrase that Dr. Sarno coined, uh, tension myoneural syndrome. Yeah. Uh, it my description perfectly. Yeah. His guidelines. And then I started reading more and more about TMS. I came across other professionals like Nicole Sachs, Alan Gordon, uh, and Fred Amir. Uh, yeah, and they, all, uh, they all subscribe to Dr. Sarno's philosophy. Yeah, uh, and yeah. then in a few short months, I'm going to say five months, uh, I was pain free. Well, wow. so I'm uh, going to stop you because I'd free. like to know, and I know our listeners like to know. First of all, I think the network quality is not so great, and it's it really is. So I'm sorry to if it's not coming out so good. Um, but we're getting going in and out of some good network quality to not so good. So thank you for your patience. I can hear you well, which is good. So what I would like to know, and I think some of the listeners is, okay, the pain started before you adopted your, your daughter and then it lasted for four years. So yeah. what, so do you feel like it was, that was what's going on. It was the fear of being a new mother, the the fear of failure. Was that pretty much how you would, would you say that was the trigger? That was the anxiety causing your brain to go into fight or flight and create, you know, the threat safety. Was that what's going on? Yeah, that's a great question. And I reflected on it uh, quite a bit. There was quite a lot going on in my life at that point. Uh, we had embarked on the adoption journey, which was very stressful. Uh, it was unpredictable. I didn't know what would happen. There was a lot of anxiety. Uh, when I traveled to California, which was where the adoption took place. So I think I was just overwhelmed and uh, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, there was a lot going on and my nervous system went into fight or flight. Yeah, wow. And I was trying to ignore it, I think, subconsciously. Uh, I was not accepting the fact that yeah. I was anxious and scared. Wow. And scared about me being a new parent because I'd never experienced this before. Right. Uh, I don't have any family or relatives in the US. Uh, I didn't know how to bring up a child. So I think all of that came together. Wow. And it was very stressful. Yeah. So and again, my God spoke for me. Yeah. To, 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 as you know now, come, being on the other end of, of the cycle, is that, you know, we can feel fear, we can feel insecure, we can feel uncertainty, we can feel angry. These are not bad emotions, but we don't have to have physical pain. We have to, you know, be in a relationship with our feelings and be connected. An, uh, uh, you know, or have a bridge from our, our conscious mind to our unconscious mind and, and, and be in that place. But a lot of us, we kind of, you know, get away with like just stuffing the feelings and moving on. And for a lot of us, it'll just start sitting in our autoimmune system or our physical body. And so, you know, 
it wasn't like you were a victim, but your, your body was like, that's it. And maybe, you know, somewhere as a child, you knew that, you know, you were sensitive, more sensitive. You look, you, you were born in India, correct? Or yes, I was right. And so who knows about the cultural? I mean, I know when I spoke to Fred twice, we had two great interviews and he was born in Iran and is living in California. And we talked a lot about cultural things and uh, look, we're, we're, we're a melting pot of a world. You know, we're living all over and we're intermarriage relating to all sorts of people culturally. And it's it's I think what God wanted, but it's like an interesting mix of soup. So continue. So you're healing kind of like a book healing. I mean, you obviously journaled and meditated and you can chat about that. But do do chat about some of the methods and strategies that you took on that helped you. And then do, and then share about where the book came from and why the title, why the book about children, which is kind of just so interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, I read Healing Back Pain by Dr. Sarna, and I think the very knowledge about uh, the nervous system and TMS itself helped me, helped me understand what was going on with chronic symptoms. So I think the first thing that helped me was the knowledge about TMS. Uh, then I started reading more and more. Uh, I read The Mind-Body Prescription, again, by Dr. Sarno. Mm -hmm. uh, I came across Nicole Sachs. So I read her book, The Meaning of Truth. Yeah. And her work was astounding because she coined the journal speak, the phrase yeah. journal speak. Yeah. So I started engaging in journal speak which I think helped me a lot because yeah. uh, I found that uh, I was suppressing a lot of my uh, big feelings and journal speak was kind of an outlet for me yeah. uh, to work through some of yeah. these feelings. Yeah, so I, that have was to, I have to comment. I have to comment to the audience because it just, you know, I'm in this work for a long time, but I learned so much and I'm going to quote my teacher and mentor, Dr. Hanscom, who, who he doesn't, if he misses a day he, that he does not journaling, he'll have neuropathy in his feet. You know, he's that committed to journaling and believes so much. And he, he helps us understand the science of it. And what I recently learned is that our bodies do not um, tolerate mental threat. It's almost like physically we can handle the, we can handle physical threat more than, but the mental threat, we're not, we're not trained for it. And it's like a whole new system. And for the most part, our bodies handle feelings and emotions and, you know, and we get, you know, fight or flight, but we go right down into rest and digest and we get on with our life. But sometimes we stay in that threat because that, for that reason, our body could, did not tolerate emotionally uh what was happening or how we were handling it or how we weren't handling it and so this is a more scientific discussion but ultimately for us to understand how important it is to 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 be in touch with not the word be in touch but to understand and be aware of our emotions and our feelings and how we personally individually express ourselves. And the journaling is an incredible way to have that relationship and to make it healthy. So continue. Yes, absolutely. And the journaling gave my inner child a voice. Beautiful. You know, there were there were a lot of deep seated feelings, and uh, the journaling brought that out. So I was able to work through a lot of that. Uh, in addition to journal speak, I did meditate you know, just to put my nervous system into rest and repair. And I also had to go through a period of deconditioning. So I subconsciously associated sitting with pain. Wow. Uh, so I could only, at the peak of my symptoms, I could only sit for six minutes a day. And if you think about it, our entire society revolves around sitting, right? If we have to go to a restaurant, we have to sit. Movie theater, you have to sit. Traveling, you have to sit. So I had to go through a period of deconditioning. So that means uh, for the first day, I had to train myself to sit for five minutes. 
the well. next day 10 minutes and the next day 15 minutes and so on and at the same time i had to tell myself sitting is safe i'm safe i had wow. to engage in that self talk wow so it was a lot of different methodologies i think that i used uh, to recover so it took a few months uh, so i wouldn't say it was a textbook cure uh, i did have to put a lot of work into it uh, but i was lucky in that my recovery was linear i know for many people there's fluctuations but for me it was a linear progression so yeah. i was happy about it yeah yeah and uh, i think i think at that point it sounds like you you figured out that no matter how the ebbs and flows were going to go you you were on a journey you were going to figure this out i mean oh yes no. Yes, I made a commitment to stick wow. with the TMS philosophy. Wow. Uh, because I thought there's no point in having one foot in the medical realm and one foot in the mind body approach. I 100% committed to the mind body approach and I think that belief helped me and it kept me going. Yeah. It's one of Sarno's like, you know, big 10 like I listed in my six or seven, you know, tools to do each day and one of them is when you 100% think psychologically, it just calms the brain down and puts you into a state of like certainty. Yes, I might have pain and it's real. We are not denying pain. The pain is real. The fact is what is the cause and let's treat the cause and you are not your pain and you are not your thoughts. Okay, and exactly. this is yeah, and, yeah, and this is important. So, so go ahead. So, this is beautiful. You're you're really getting you're really speaking clearly, and I think it'll be a uh, yeah, real testimony. Uh, you, you, so, you brought up you brought up the twelve reminders by Doctor Sarno. I used to read them every day, <laughs> so it was almost like a prayer for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that would reassure me that what I have is TMS, and it would help me think psychologically. So reading those 12 reminders every day really, really helped me. Wow. Along with uh, reading success stories or listening to success stories. Yeah. Uh, that strengthened my belief and increased my confidence. Beautiful. And what, what, uh, happened, so when you would have, what happened when you would have a flare up? What happened when you, the baby would cry and you would get in pain? Like, can you share that, you know, maybe when you fell and, Found it hard to get up. What 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 was? Can you give us an example of a little bit about your journey? Because you were raising a child. I mean, everything was so new for you yeah. in those years. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, everything was difficult. But you know, I did everything that a new mother would do, like you know, feeding and taking care of the child. So I was able to do all of that. I was able to move around. I just couldn't sit for a long time. So I couldn't sit with her and you know rock her for a long time. I could just do it for a couple minutes, but then I had to put her down and then have my husband take over. Uh, wow. After I started recovering, you know, I did have a few flares now and again, but they were not as bad as the original TMS pain. I was able to very quickly recover in a few hours or you know in a day or two. Wow. Uh, again, I would read Sarno's 12 reminders. I would journal, I would meditate, and then uh, I would just force myself not to panic. I think that was the key to not right. give in to my fear. Right. Wow. So you, you understood your fear, you understood your relationship with it, and then you also had a mission. You know, and Fred Amir talks about having goals and having um, a purpose. Not only did you want to raise your child, I mean, he, he had sciatica pain for two years, horrible IBS and allergies. And his goal when he walked with enormous leg pain was I want to lift my daughter. So I'm sure that you had purpose, which was important. And I, I recommend that to people to you know, not like hold a carrot stick over your head, but to really believe that you could reach your goals, but make the goals and stick with them and keep seeing them. And this is the whole law of attraction and quantum physics. So I share now. So share now about the book. Which do you have a copy of it? 
next to uh, you? It's, it's a Kindle version, so oh, I don't have a Kindle version. Copy. Okay. Uh, but yes, I, I did. My goal was to write a book because uh, most of the TMS resources are designed for adults. But wow. you know, there are kids out there with chronic symptoms. Uh, but you know, they we don't have books or material that are designed or written in a child-friendly way. Wow. Uh, because beautiful. I myself have a child. And I when I was a kid, I had migraine headaches. So I had chronic symptoms when I was a child. And I wish I knew about TMS when I was 10 and 11. Wow. So I wanted to write a book in a very simple to understand way, designed for kids between the ages of eight and 12, about what TMS is and some very simple strategies they can use uh, to recover from chronic pain. Amazing. Um, yeah, I have it. I have it on. I put it on um, Instagram and I have it on the TMS Roundtable and we'll I'll put it up again tomorrow. Um, so it's in Kindle form and can i ask you to share what would be different for a child than an adult uh, yes the language uh, i used very very simple uh, verbiage and language i did not make it technical at all uh, i provided a lot of examples and stories um, and of course i included my own story wow as well. beautiful uh, and of course, anyone can read it. It's not you know, just for kids. Anyone can read it. Yeah. It's not designed to be a comprehensive guide. I have included a lot of references uh, for books, or websites, and podcasts. Yeah. So if a child's caregivers are reading the book, uh, they have additional material that they can reference in addition to the book. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Beautiful. So yeah, I have drawn from... Uh, professionals like uh, Alan Gordon, Nicole Sachs, and Joe Dispenza. Uh, I've done the work for you, and I've synthesized everything into a very, very simple, easy to follow kind of a guide. Wow. And I've included some very practical uh, recommendations, including journaling. Beautiful, beautiful. So at what point did you think like this is at some point, um, you know, I like, like I noticed and I said this to you earlier, I didn't bring it up yet in the, in the broadcast, but so many people heal themselves in their own specific story, but not so dissimilar to yours. And they become coaches because that's their drive to like, I need to help someone else. And that's exactly what you did. You're like, I need to help someone else not suffer like me. But the approach from a for a child is really very special, you know, very, very special and very unique. And it makes you unique and it draws something special and sensitive and uh, sincere in you. And I want you to chat about that, like the part of you that's expressed yourself in this book possibly did not express them themselves as a child. And look, I'm a mother and a grandmother and, you know, none of us are perfect. And um, I think parenthood is the hardest job in the world. And I never underestimate the job and it, it continues our whole life, especially mothers and fathers and daughters. But, and so here there was must be some sensitive moments about your own mother and about raising your daughter and writing this book and sharing it with people you don't even know. I mean, really, it was it was a big jump into like, I need to give. I need to move this energy through, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I grew up in India, like you mentioned. And this was, you know, in my generation, I think the general rule was children are seen and not heard. Oh, yeah. So I was rarely given a voice wow. uh, in my culture. And I think that contributed to my TMS because I suppressed a lot at, at that age. And partly it is my personality. When I was a child, uh, I did not disclose a lot. Uh, I did not reveal a lot about my emotions or what I was going through. So I strongly believe that giving children a voice is very helpful 
uh, not just for the child, but also the caregivers and parents, uh, because it is helpful to understand uh, what children are experiencing and to help them through their stresses. Uh, now, you mentioned, you know, being a parent is hard, but I understand being a child is also hard. <laughs> It's so true. It was hard for me. You know, when I was 10 and 11, being a child was hard. Uh, I was a victim of childhood bullying, and I never told anybody what I experienced uh, for the fear that I would be shamed wow. and for the fear that I would be blamed. Wow. Uh, so I just suppressed it. And I think all that anxiety and stress uh, brought on the migraine headache. Uh, my first migraine episode was when I was 11. Wow. I didn't know what was happening to me. I was wow. very scared. Um, so wow. when I told my parents I, I had a fever because that was the only verbiage I knew, I didn't know how to describe disorientation. I had neurological symptoms, including disorientation. I didn't have the vocabulary to explain it. Wow. So I just said, I have a fever. I'm not going to school. And no one believed me. <gasps> they thought I was feigning. Oh, so, so the first, the first, like the first rejection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I went to school. I could not function. I could not process auditory information, and the the episode lasted the whole day. Uh, I was not able to function. Wow. I mean, I could see the the spots in front of my eyes and. Uh, half of my body went numb. It was very scary. You remember I, it. I remember it. I Oh, I remember it very clearly. Um, but now thinking back, yes, it was TMS because I was bullied. There was a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of stress. Uh, I was made to feel a lot of shame. I was an overweight kid. So I was bullied because of that. Uh, so I strongly believe, uh, yes, I think it's good to give children a voice and to listen to them, to really listen to them. Wow. Wow. Uh, which is one of the reasons I wrote the book um, for kids. Yeah. I mean, now, now it's even more clear to me. I remember you said something about that, but I, I remember now about the bullying. So now it's more clear the process and look somebody else might not have a story that you know the dots and the t's are crossed and the dots are you know you know on the eyes and i i think your story just but it just makes such perfect sense and what a you know what a yellow brick road to get home because you and i know now no matter what happens with your body you have this relationship with it, this language, this um, bridge from the unconscious mind to the conscious mind, that you'll know when you're feeling anxious, you'll know when you're feeling sad, happy, um, angry. Wow, unbelievable. Um, what would you leave? What would you leave with the listeners? Um, you know, I just happen to see this. I don't think it matters. I don't think it's, it matters, but I, I, I do, you know, I'm on, I'm on Facebook a lot more than Instagram. And there happens to be two or three big, big mental health pages. One is two are autoimmune diseases and they're out of India. They're out of, and I got a call the other day. I often occasionally get a call from somebody from India. And I, I'm, I'm, look, I think all over the world we're, we're struggling with, you know, relationships and our body. And, but it's interesting because maybe there's just a voice coming out of India for people that, you know, maybe, I think because of the Eastern philosophy of healing, it could be that, you know, and, and, but it's interesting because there seems to be a lot of the culture. And I don't know if it's something culturally, because all women have a little bit of a, you know, you're a woman, you're a man. I mean, you know, so, but I, I, I am so sorry that you were bullied. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, really. Thank you. Thank you. And I feel like the bullies, the bullies are the ones also getting TMS because they're the bullies and they don't, they can't, they, they're not even in touch with their feelings at all, but they're also getting theirs because they, 
they were struggling. And that's uh, yes, what they bullied you. Uh, yeah, and that is something I did journal about and I've worked through it. And the people who believed me were children at that time. You know, they were 10 and 11 and they have no memory of it. I'm friends with them on Facebook. <laughs> and they are super nice to me now. You know, all of us have grown up and, you know, we've evolved. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, they were doing it innocently and they had no idea about wow. the impact that it would have. Yeah, uh, but I'm very, very sensitive about bullying, and I will speak up if I witness it. Uh, and you know, uh, I would talk to my kid about it uh, wow. if she experiences it or if she witnesses it. So uh, I, I would not stay quiet. Yeah. Wow. Wow. This is a. Uh, yeah. This is this is deeper than just healing chronic pain. This is really about. Um, you know, adverse childhood experiences and um, how you were sort of groomed. That was, if something was gonna happen, something was gonna give. And so amazing that it happened and how you handled it and how, you know, the godly angels, I always think it's, or it's you know, it's nothing's, nothing's, Michael Galinsky calls it not spontaneous. It's like these you know, coincidences, things happen. There's a word like this happened and that happened. And to be aware in the universe about these things happening and grab that opportunity, you know, cause it's the, it's, it's someone speaking to us. So, you know, you're like, I just went on to Google, you know, I just yeah. decided to press my, you know, back, healing back pain. I mean, I don't think Sarno even thought, well, I'm going to name it healing back pain so people will Google it. He's one, he doesn't think like that. But healing back pain was what he handled it. Um, mm -hmm. it, it. There was another name that they changed it. I think the, the first name was mind over back pain. And I think they changed it to healing back pain. I don't know. I, I mean, I can ask Galinsky about that. But the steps that you took were really phenomenal. And, you know, I've, I hear lots of stories and I've just not heard a story like this. And... Uh, you know, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to report that it's been eight years and I've been symptom free. Wow. Uh, and uh, I strongly believe in the mind body approach. Uh, I believe that any ailment has an emotional component to it. Uh, I have absolutely no health anxiety at all. I mean, there are anxieties and stresses in my life. You know, I'm a parent, uh, I work full time, there are anxieties but I know how to manage them. Right. Uh, and uh, I, I still practice meditation. Uh, I do journaling, maybe not every day, but uh, at least once in a while, uh, when I feel like I need to, I do it. I listen to my body. Uh, I try my best not to get overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, and I'm ever so thankful that I got TMS so that wow. I was able to get this knowledge and pay it forward. Wow. So that's, see, that's the quantum. When you can thank the tumor, God forbid, or I know people that are thanked their tumor, or you could thank your body for your wake-up call. It's almost like I say, you know, you took the bullet for your daughter. You said, okay, I can, I, you know, let me, let me be the pain. I don't want her to have the pain and she'll learn from you. And of course she'll have her own pain, but here you've helped her and many others and many other parents that will hear this. So again, um, I'd love you to reach out to Eddie because we have a little bit different audience and he'll ask you some different questions, but he'll be just as excited. And you know, he's got two daughters. He's this like, weightlifter he's, you know god gave him two daughters so he's he's all mush but i'd love yes, you to and I, reaching out to him I, 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 oh yeah, i was gonna uh, say uh, yeah. you know our stories are parallel because we both have 10 year olds okay. and we both recovered at the same time reading healing back pain oh wow yeah yeah and there'll be some other people that will contact you so to our listeners um I would, I go, and the book is, has been on my page with the, uh, the um, link. And, you know, if people want to reach out to you and just ask you some questions, can they reach out to you on Facebook Messenger? Absolutely. You know, and, 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 and Facebook Messenger. Great, great. 
um, I think it's such an important proactive, preventative, um, such an incredible to fix it before it's broken. Now, it's not like it breaks, but to kind of, like you said, pay it forward, which is such a beautiful concept. And um, yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm so happy to, to have spent this time with you. And um, I always say I will meet again. And if I can ever help, and uh, and I there's a handful of coaches that have been reaching out and saying, you know, can you share any of your guests? And I'm going to send you to um, a few different people because you speak beautifully. You really are clear, and um, and your book is needs to be read and shared and be in all the school systems. Who knows what the future holds? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Much appreciated. Yeah, thank you for the thank your your boss in the middle of the day, and I was a little bit of a pain in the neck, you know, reaching you. But um, thank you so much, Pretha. It's a beautiful name, Pritha. Pritha. It's a beautiful name, and you're a beautiful soul, as we say in Hebrew, a neshama, a beautiful soul. And the word neshama is also for the word breath, the same thing as the soul. So have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much. This will be up on the YouTube you. uh, this evening or tomorrow. Anyone can see it. And um, blessings to you and your family. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. One second. It's going to go off.